I'm going to wave my magic mandrel and Jewelry Maker is back. <laughs> if you don't know me, I'm Debbie Kershaw. I'm one of the guest designers here at Jewelry Maker. And throughout our birthday week, we have got an extra hour after the live show so that we can open this amazing calendar, show you what's in it, and then do a demo on what's in the box. Now, this calendar was put together especially for Jewelry Maker's 13th birthday. And we've been having sneaky peeks throughout the week of uh, what's inside and I've got box number seven so I'm going to be opening box number seven with you it's exciting it's like Christmas isn't it? like Christmas day okay so mine is box number seven I know what's in here obviously because I've made with it so box number seven let's see what's inside so I need my glasses on for this so inside we've got an organza bag, which is always nice because I think if you're making to gift or um, you're making to sell, you can never have enough of these, can you? And inside, what have we got? Look at that. We have got five three millimeter grandidiorite. Yeah, you heard right, grandidiorite little gemstones. So there are so many things that we can use these four and if you haven't heard of grandidiorite before it's actually in the top three of the world's most rarest gemstones so what we're looking at here is a really rare gemstone that's quite amazing to get this in the calendar actually this calendar is amazing um, so I had a good think when I got these about what I could do with them <coughs> excuse me so I know that not everyone is a silversmith and not everyone works with metal, but of course, if you are a metal smith, then you could flush set these, you can channel set these. There's lots of things that you can do with them. But I know that a lot of our viewers don't work with metal. So I racked my brains and I thought, what can I show you that maybe works for everybody? So I've made some stacking rings. I love wearing rings, I love making rings. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna do some stacking rings. And then at the end, if I've got time, I will talk you through how to set this gemstone into a silversmith ring, if that's what you want to do. So let me show you what I made. So I've only used three of the five in these um, designs. So we've got three, let me turn them to face you, all little, rings here so this one has just been set into a little teeny sterling silver stacking ring so for that one i've used wire and a little snap setting so this is a nice easy snap setting i'm going to show you how to do that and um, this one here is a stretchy ring um, this is just using beading elastic and just stringing on so actually stringing on is something if you haven't made jewelry before you can definitely have a go with um, and this beginners or intermediate alike we all make the stretchy bracelets and the stretchy bangles so that's really good if someone could grab me a glass of water please <clears throat> i've been talking for her five hours which for me isn't usually a problem but I'm getting dry and then I thought right what other mediums are really good fun that everybody can do and the other medium that I think is really good fun is wire work so the last one that I made was um, a wire work ring with the Grand Idiorite which is this sort of a little daisy ring here it's a bit difficult to see on the white background there you go you can see it there um, with a little Grand Idiorite center there thank you um, so that's a wire work ring. Now, the same thing, way, way of setting the stone, I've done across all three, and that's with our snap tight settings. Now, here at Jewelry Maker, we do lots of different settings, and of course, if you are a metalsmith, then you'll be able to make your settings from scratch. You won't need me to tell you how to do that. I'm just going to take a little sip. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, but all three of these have been set using a snap tight setting so a snap tight setting is a really easy way to set little stones like this and you don't have to use a lot of intricate tools um, you don't have to have a lot of knowledge so i was thinking of maybe something that that we could all do and all have a go at so that's what i'm going to be demoing today now if you wanted to get the snap tight setting i have got a code i don't know if they're available now on our website but i know a lot of our viewers have these snap tight settings in their um, stashes and maybe you've been wondering what to do with them so let me have a look at the code is H-U-R 
F18. So that's H-U-R-F-1-H. So if we have got any, you just need to type that code into the Jewelry Maker website and they'll come up. If we don't have any left, not to worry because we're always getting these in all of the time and they're really handy for setting little gemstones and you know not being afraid. It's a great starter way of setting little gemstones and, and not being afraid of it because it's super easy. Should we get started? Right, so the tools that I've used, and I'm just going to go through them, is just a basic tool set. So if you're a beginner to jewellery making, um, we do a really great tool set, basic jewellery making tool set on our website. I think it's about £7, so it's a it's really good investment. And I, from that tool set, I have just used round nose pliers. I've used some uh, flush cutters, some chain nose pliers and some longer chain nose pliers. So that's all you'll be needing for the wire work ring and for the elastic ring. If you're going to be making the um, metal smithing, then you'll need some sterling silver wire as well and all of your, your heating tools. I know we've ha already had a soldering demo calendar demonstration, so I thought I'd just stay away from that today. Now, when we're making rings with wire, whether it be metal smithing or whether it just be wire work, you need something to form your ring around and also to size your ring too. So this is again a jewelry maker ring mandrel and it's got all the way up here all of the sizes. So if you wanted to make a specific size in your ring then you can just wrap your wire around the size that corresponds and I'll show you that when we come to do the wire work ring. Okay, are you ready? Have you had a nice weekend? Have you done a little bit of celebrating, a little bit of flag waving? Did you see all the wonderful jewels on the coronation? I kept calling my husband and going, look at that diamond, look at that, <laughs> absolutely amazing. It's inspired me to make jewelry, so I hope it's inspired you as well. Okay, so let's have a look at these little um, settings, these little snap tight settings that I keep going on about. Look, I've made a mess. This is just like my desk at home. I'm gonna put number seven back in the calendar first. There we go pretend we're nice and neat. So if we go on the overhead, I'll show you these little settings. And they're basically um, sterling silver, and they've got little claws, one, two, three, four, five, six little claws on there. And the great thing about these is you just need to take your gemstone and it sort of press it in, and it snaps into place. And that, um, is all there is to it as far as setting, whereas other methods of setting gemstones can be a little bit daunting, especially if you haven't done it before. So what we need to start off with is one of our gemstones. So these are the little grandidiorites here, which I'm going to try and open without popping all over the desk. Well, we're off to a good start because I can't open them. Hold on. <laughs> Don't you love live television? Here we go, we'll try some pliers. I did have them open just now actually and I was scared they were gonna go all over the studio. So I, uh, I closed the box a little bit too well. Ah, I've done it. Now they need to be in a secure box because obviously you need to protect them um, while you're transporting them, while we're shipping them and um, in the calendar. Come on box, there we go. So I'll pop them in that side of the box so that you can see them there. The great thing about the Grandidiorite is it's got a really distinctive colour. Um, you know, a lot of people don't know about Grandidiorite as one of the most precious gems. You know, you think of your rubies, think of your diamonds. But Grandidiorite is, if you have a look at some of the really high-end jewellery collections, they have this gemstone in them. Because of the rarity of it, it's incredibly hard to get hold of but it's in our calendar, so that's a great result. So what I'm gonna do is just take out one of my little stones, and you'll find with these stones that they are flat on one side, and then they've got your little point on the end. So great for prong setting, if you are a metal smith and you want to prong set. Really, really good for flush setting. 
um, our channel setting and we do do a lot of pre-made mounts I mean these mounts are incomplete jewelry they're more of a finding but we do do sort of rings that have the mounts already on that you can set these sorts of gemstones in and there's lots of tutorials on the website and on all of the jewelry maker shows that show you how to do these techniques okay so what we're going to need is one of our settings and this setting actually corresponds to the size of the gemstone I know that sounds obvious but you do get different sizes so you wouldn't want to put a three millimeter gemstone into say a four millimeter setting because it wouldn't sit properly so you just need to make sure that the huggy setting or the snap setting that you've got is the right size for the gemstone and in this case these grandidiorite gemstones are three mil and this huggy <coughs> excuse me setting is three mil and the air conditioning sent a voice off mm -hmm. <coughs> if i can't speak i'll just do it in interpretive dance don't worry okay so what you're going to need to do is get your gemstone so that you actually have the pointy bit facing upwards and then what we're going to do is take the snap tight setting and just press it down over the top and you'll hear sort of a little snap like a click sound um, and that is then just snapped into place now when I was thinking about this if you were going to make a soldered ring you would solder this little setting onto your ring shank so you would just make your basic ring um, you would need to use two types of solder because there will be two solder joints there'll be one for actually bringing the ring together and one for adding on your setting so you could make your ring in a setting like that which is lovely because you can stack those you can stack all different gemstones or you could even do all five and have all five that looks like one big ring but then you can wear them singly as well so that's one way of doing it but as I said at the beginning not everybody knows how to or wants to use those advanced methods so what I thought was let's make a stretchy ring and what you'll need for this is some beading elastic now beading elastic comes in different widths now the widths that I've got here and I would have bought some black because it would have been easier to see but I've run out so this is just like a clear beading elastic this width is a 0.8 width um, I'm using it because it's all I had left but I would recommend that if you have a thinner elastic the better because what you're going to do is put that elastic into your little mount and then you're going to set your gemstone on top of it so the less sort of diameter that you have of your beading elastic uh, the better it is but I, I think this will work but if it doesn't it doesn't matter because I've already done one that I can show you now when you're setting these little gemstones you want to set them on a hardish surface so actually setting them on my bead mat is probably not going to be a good idea because I need to get that sort of bit of purchase so I'm going to move my beading mat to the side here and just a little hack for you when dealing with these gemstones they do like to ping everywhere ping all over the studio I've got a sticky bead mat here and it's not got much stick left but enough to actually hold my gemstone in place so I'm going to take my gemstone um, there's probably a few dog and cat hairs on here <laughs> just be warned there's many dogs and cats in my in my house and what you're going to want to do now I don't know if we can zoom in a little bit on the overhead is that possible oh perfect thank you so much so what we're going to need to do is run our piece of elastic across the top here and sort of make sure you don't sort of wonk it wonk, you don't want it wonky say that fast three times you don't want it wonky um going across because you want this to sit and be the centerpiece of your ring so usually you would get your head right over the top which I'm not going to do because my head will be in the camera but I'm just going to explain it and you're going to take your elastic and just pop it across your hoggy setting can you see that so that I've gone sort of roughly in the center and then we are going to have our gemstone with the point facing upwards and this is the fiddly part so I'm just just bear with me it's not sort of a, a very quick process when you've got the thinner elastic it's easier 
and you need to get it so that you've got hold of your setting on the top and then you just need to go over your stone and you're going to press this down until it clips into place and what you'll find where are we is that let me move that out of the way you will set the stone with the elastic underneath it like that now sometimes you can set the stone first and then thread your elastic or whatever through sometimes you can't it depends how deeply set the stone is and because this is a natural gemstone you're going to get a lot of different variations even on the same size gemstone so some will be deeper and some will be thinner so you need to really problem solve before you start um, just set it with your elastic underneath the gemstone and then you won't have to worry about taking the stone out afterwards now when you've set these they can be a little bit fiddly you want to get right on the level of the stone and you want to have a look at it so I'm going to lift this up to my eye line now and I'm just having a really good look at it and what I'm looking for is the table the top of the stone to be level now sometimes with these snap tight settings because we go over the top of the setting and we push down with our fingers we can be a little bit wonky especially if we're trying to hold wire or elastic to set underneath and when you actually pick your stone up and you have a look it will be a little bit wonky now sometimes you can just put your um, fingernail or something that's not going to damage the stone and just press it down and you'll notice that it'll snap again if you're not happy with the setting, you can take your pliers and just make sure that all of your little prongs are just squeezed in and hugging the top of the stone. Now I'm making that sound far more complicated than it is. That's just for the troubleshooting. I'm gonna take the sticky bead mat out of the way now and bring back my bead board. So really what you're doing, just to recap, and it, this is, works eight out of 10 times, is on a hardish surface, you're turning your gemstone so you've got pointy end up, and then you're taking your um, snap tight setting upside down and you're just pressing it down over the bead and it goes click like that, a bit like a press stud. But the only thing that we're doing differently in this make is that we've actually trapped some of our beading elastic underneath the gemstone so that means that we don't have to solder we don't have to do any of those advanced techniques anybody can do this and it makes lovely stacking rings i've seen a lot of these on the high street actually i think um pandora did some i think thomas sabo did some um, i know misoma did some and they were all made with the the, the jewelry elastic so this is a 0.8 it does work with a 0.8 um, but i would say if you've got the thinner which i think is 0.5 from memory i would use that instead so what you're left when you've done that is a nice set gemstone which should have been nice and easy to set and i didn't say but you want to do that roughly in the center of your let me come right into your like there we go you want to do that in the center of your elastic because what we're going to do is string on our chosen beads either side and then tie it in a knot and hide the knot now this is one that i made with an amethyst gemstone that i had because i wanted to show you that not only can you do it with um, spacer beads so this is the one actually from the calendar and i think the best way to see this is if i put it on any excuse to put more rings on there we go so if I show that to the overhead what I've done is so that is essentially now a sterling silver because I've used sterling silver space beads and um, grandidiorite precious metal ring and we haven't used any heat we haven't used any soldering but it still is lovely as a stacking ring and that is used with I think they would be three millimeter sterling silver spacer beads and you can get spacer beads in all different sizes and shapes and base metal or sterling or gold plated whatever you like on a jewelry maker website but i know as jewelry makers we tend to have these sorts of things in our stash so you can definitely use that so all we've used so far for this stretchy ring is our snap tight setting one of our five stones from our calendar 
some beading elastic and the stones of your choice. So I've used my um, sterling silver ones because I wanted them to, to be able to sort of go with lots of different rings. But with the amethyst one that's on my beading mat, I actually had some little amethyst gemstones. So if you've got some grandidiorite gems that you've had from a kit or that you've bought from JM before, you could use those in your stacking ring instead. You're the designer, you know what you want it to look like, it's all the same technique. I tell you that if you are going to use a gemstone, I would usually use a spacer bead on the back just to hide the knot and I've seen a couple of designers do this as well they have like one silver bead at the back and if you're in the know you know that's so that you can hide the knot of the elastic um, it's not the end of the world if you see the knot but it gives you that lovely professional finish if you find that you can't get your knot inside the bead another little hack is to take a crimp cover and just pop the crimp cover over the top of the knot and squash that into place I've done that before as well okay let's make the ring shall we so I'm going to move that one out of the way and then what I'm going to use for this one is some spacer beads so let's see what I've got on my beading mat so these are just three millimeter silver spacer beads now the great thing about spacer beads is that they have a really decent size hole so if you are working with thread or you're working with elastic when you actually make the knot you've got a good chance of being able to pull the knot inside that bead but as i say if you've got spacer beads with a smaller hole uh, you could just use a crimp cover to cover the elastic or if it's for you and you don't mind having the knot at the back it really doesn't matter okay so you've got your grandidia right in the center of your elastic and then we just want to string on some of our beads now what I like to do with my elastic is just cut it to a little point and that just makes it easier for me to get into the beads and, and string them on and also at the very end when I'm trying to pull my elastic through uh, the bead and to sort of encase that knot having this point's a bit easier to get hold of so let's go for it. So I'm going to bring these little spaces in and it's just literally threading and you want to thread ideally an even number on each side so that your knot will sit at the back. So I tend to find that these sorts of projects are so relaxing and mindful. You get a lovely piece of jewelry at the end of it that didn't take forever to make. Um, but also, you know, it's the sort of thing that you can do while you're watching the telly on your lap. You can make loads of them. They're not going to take a lot of time and they're really wearable. I mean, the designers are doing these sorts of stackers. Um, you're adding value to your grandidia, right, if you do use precious metal. So if you do want to use your sterling silver or your um, gold or rose gold plated sterling silver, then you think here you're actually working with a really rare gemstone and you're also working with sterling silver which is your snap setting on that gemstone so personally i think it's lovely to use precious metal but if you've got base metal and you're happy with that of course you can use those as well so we're going to want an even number on both sides of our little grandidia right how exciting has birthday been? So I've been on jewelry maker this morning and we have had the most gorgeous, I mean, we had these pearls and I was seriously considering like grabbing them and running. <laughs> the pearls were amazing and we've had jade and just absolutely spoilt. Um, and then with these extra demos, I believe next week they're going to, from next week, the demos are going to be before the show. Um, 7 a.m. rather than after the show but you can always catch up on YouTube so I know we are missing a couple of the demos on YouTube at the moment because we've had the bank holiday so we'd, those will be uploaded don't worry there's already some on there and if you don't get to watch it live you most certainly can um, watch it back again and there's going to be for every single door in that calendar so there's 13 doors there's going to be 13 demos from 13 different designers so that's a lot of learning there and a lot of uh, really nice inspiration we hope um, with some amazing things I mean you know who gets grandidia right in a 
calendar. All right, so what I've done is, now that's not enough to make a ring, but we, you don't wanna watch me string on forever. So what I tend to do as far as sizing concern, uh, concern on a stretchy ring, is as I'm going, I just pop it around the finger um, if it's for, for yourself, or if you're actually making it for someone else and you know the ring size, you can pop it around the mandrel until your beads meet. So bearing in mind, if you wanted an N to O, you'd want your beads to meet. Now the best thing that I can say about doing this is not to tie a knot really tight so that your beads sort of rack out. You want to leave a little bit of space so that the ring will comfortably roll on and off. So if you look at this finished ring there, that's that's a circle, you know, it's not all crinkled up and tight. It's going to be comfortable to roll on and roll off. So we're not looking for a great amount of tension when we do the knot. And you know, you might not get it the first time, you might need to, and it doesn't matter how long you've been making jewelry. One of the main things that people say to me is, oh, I can't stand doing knots in elastic. I mean, I'm a silversmith, I can cast with precious metals, um, but it took me ages to master the knot and it's just a knack you just want to sit there and, and keep practicing um, and then you'll find that you get it's just getting the right tension and I've got a, a couple of tips on on how to get that tension that I've learned along the way so when you've got your um, amount of beads on you then want to tie your knot now if you've got our um, elasticity thread there is a diagram on the back that shows you how to knot now there's lots of different knots that you can do my daughter makes a load of stretchies she's she made me this bracelet actually and a lot of stretchy rings and she literally does a shoelace knot just two overhand knots and i'm like oh you don't want to do it like that and you know none of her stretchy jewelry has ever come apart and I wear this every day because she made it for me and it hasn't come apart and she's just done a shoelace knot. Um, I've done surgeon's knots in the past. You need to just kind of find the knot that works for you. So this is the knot that, I'm, that I use. Um, but as I say, my daughter just uses uh, two single knots and job's, job's good. Now I'm gonna try and show you this and I'm aware, I apologize that the thread is clear but um, you'll get the gist. So you've got your left and you've got your right tail. Now I'm just gonna move this out of the way and imagine that we finish this. This is a bit be a, a ring for a little finger or a little person. And what I tend to do is get my tails and I'm going to take my left tail over the right and take it underneath and then bring it down, not all the way. And then I'm gonna take my right tail, oh, <coughs> excuse me, over my left. So I'll try and show you that before I do the knot, bear with me. So I don't know if you can see that, but I've gone left over right, and then right over left. And then what I do is I don't give it a one great big tug. I do it gently. So you don't want to be doing this in your bad mood. So you're just going to sort of take the knot down so that you've got a little bit of space. I try and get my hands out of the way either side. And then I start to sort of give it a little tug. It's very gently until it comes in. Now, at this point, I find that it's quite useful if you've got a ring mandrel or actually I often use, my, excuse this tool is very dirty, but it's my polishing, my ring polisher tool. I'll pop the ring over the top of either this or my mandrel. This won't fit because we've done a baby one. Um, and then tie the knot. So it's keeping the ring at the right size and not making it too tight. And then before I do anything else, I just do little tiny pulls to get that knot to close. What tends to happen, if you give that a big almighty tug, you'll either do it too tight or you'll lose one of the beads up into your knot um, or it just, it won't stay closed. And then before I do anything else, I just get a little bit of glue and pop it onto that knot so that you've got that extra security of a dab of glue on that knot and it's not gonna come undone and then you want to just pop that aside and just leave that um, until your glue has dried 
And then when your glue's dried, you want to trim your tails down so that you're not having to work with big um, tails. Okay. And if you can, it's not, you don't have to do this. You feed one of your tails back through your bead there and pull the bead into, sorry, pull the, the knot, not the bead, the knot into the bead. Now don't be really heavy handed with it, just be really gentle and you'll feel it, it'll slip in there. Now if you think, oh, that knot is not gonna fit inside the bead, another thing you can do is just leave the knot exposed, which is fine, or you can get a crimp cover and just cover that knot with the crimp. And then when your, um, all your glue's dry and everything, you just want to take your scissors or your cutters and just cut off those little tails there and then you have got your stretchy ring. And I think if you have a look at that, you're going to see that you can't see that knot at all. That's been pulled in really nicely to the beads. And you, you know, don't worry if your um, elastic doesn't go through um, and, and not immediately. Uh, that really doesn't matter. You can just keep doing it until you're happy with the knot. And if you wait for that glue to dry, then you don't have to worry about your knot anyway because you've got that added security. Okay, so that's ring number one. And I feel like um, anybody can do that. It's a great starter. If you, we, a lot of us begin with earrings or we begin with stretchy bracelets or stretchy rings um, in our jewelry making journey. So that's a great one for beginners. Now, also, if you're a crafter, I think us crafters can turn our hands to most things, can't we? So um, you could even be a beginner and do the next one. But this might be a little bit more intermediate. OK, so let's move on to a little bit more intermediate. And I wouldn't class myself as um, an advanced wire worker at all. I am no Rachel Norris. <laughs> Rachel Norris is on um, our birthday shows this week and she'll, I know she'll be doing some absolutely amazing thing but you know everybody needs to start somewhere and wire work rings I really enjoy making again it's instant gratification because you're making a your wire work ring and it doesn't take a long time you don't have to like slave at it for hours and you know you've got something that you can wear tonight or later or um, straight away with wire rings then especially wire rings that are cold connections which means that we're not adding any heat we're not soldering we, we don't have to do any advanced techniques so let's talk about the tools that we'll need for this ring and I'm going to actually take it out of the um, holder and I'm going to pop it on because I think you need to have a look. So this is a little daisy and what I've actually used here is um, some seed beads in sort of a pearl colour. What I wanted to use was some seed pearls because I thought, you know, it's Grandidia, right? I'd really like to add some some value, some some pearls, some opulence into that. Um, but I couldn't find any. Typically, when I'm looking in my stash, I'll find some tomorrow, you watch. So you could do this with any small, maybe you've got some small little um, rubies or anything. You can make any flower you want because your little, um, grandidiorite that's been set exactly the same in the hoggy setting is going to sort of be the stamen of your flower. So what we need for this, you're going to need something to form your jewellery around. So once again, we've got our trusty uh, bead mandrel. You've got to excuse me because I've been up since 4am. So the fact that I'm making any sense is a blooming miracle. <laughs> So, but I get to talk about what I'm passionate about, which is jewelry making, so that's an extra bonus. So you want a bead mandrel. If you don't have a bead mandrel, if you've got any sort of cylindrical thing at home, if you're just starting out, um, you might have something in your kitchen cupboards that you could use. Anything that you can just form wire around and make a ring shape. And again, if you're using these mandrels, they're great because you can take it to the exact size that you want to make. Now you're also going to need some wire to make the main sort of ring shank part and I've got here some 0.8 this is 0.8 plated wire if you've got sterling silver wire 
that would be great because you've got a sterling silver snap setting and a grandidia right so you can make a really nice high-end piece of jewelry if you're using sterling silver but if not it's absolutely fine to use this is copper plated so any wire this is 0.8 you could also use one mil as well um, one millimeter might be a little bit harder to maneuver with your hands but um it, you can still do the job so i, I just my, my sweet kind of spot for wire is is 0.8 for rings and i am going to go around and do a double shank so this should be fine so i've got my 0.8 wire i've got my ring mandrel i've got my grandidia right and i'll show you um how i set that in a moment and then you just need your beads to go round the outside so i'm just going to use the seed beads that i used in the piece that I just showed you. Again, seed pearls would be lovely or a little round gemstone. I think we've all got these sort of um, small micro faceted gemstones in our stash that we might not necessarily know um, what to do with. And the great thing is that because we're going to use a thinner wire to add sort of the petals to the outside of the grandidia, right? You can use a 0.4 or a 0.25 even for these. So it doesn't matter too much how large you drill hole is um, so that's great because that means you can get you know those really tiny ones that you've got in your stash that you always wondered what the heck you were going to do with this is the sort of design that you could use those for so we've got our 0.8 wire you will also need some wire um, to wrap and make your petals out of and this is now I've used this bright pink wire because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing usually I'd use a matching um, color of wire but I thought if I use this bright pink then you might be able to see just a little bit clearer what I'm doing and how I've set this grandidia right here is exactly the same as I set the one with the elastic it's actually a bit simpler because the wire is a bit thinner so I literally popped wire across the setting instead of elastic turned it upside down and just popped it onto the gemstone so exactly the same technique that I showed you at the beginning but instead of putting elastic through that um, snap setting I've put some wire so again 0.4 is probably the ideal um, this is a 0.25 but i use this one because i wanted to show you a color and let's think i think that's all we need so we've got our grandiderite our wire our mandrel and then you'll need your basic tool kit to get started so first of all we're going to make the main part of our ring so we we'll just pop this to the side sip of prosecco not really it's water and um, what I tend to find with wire I broke my finger um, a couple of years ago and so I need to sort of um, be careful when I'm working with wire because it can make my hands ache and the best sort of tip that I found is when you get the wire off the reel it can be quite stiff and a bit difficult to work with and if you run wire through your hands what you're essentially doing is annealing it because you're warming it up and you'll find that it starts to make that wire a lot more malleable and a lot softer and as a consequence that makes the wire much much easier to work with and to maneuver so what I'm going to do is get my mandrel and let's imagine that we're going to make a certain size ring so the average size ring um, in the UK is sort of an N to O, which I think is a U, um, US 7. So on this mandrel, we have got our sizes here so that we know what part of the mandrel we want to wrap the wire around. Now, if you haven't made rings before, um, don't get bogged down with this. You can just um, tweak it later to the size by trying it on once you've made the size. If, you, if you're just starting out, don't be worried about, about sizing. If you get a nice ring out of it that fits any finger, then it's a bonus. So what I'm gonna do is take roughly the center of my wire and I'm going to place it on the mandrel round about the size that I want. And then I'm using my hands to got some good tension there to just wrap this wire around. 
and it's all sort of roughly at the size that I'm wanting. Now, I'm not going to have three coils. You could do, you can have more than one. I think with 0.8, you need more than one for the structure, but I like to wrap it around an extra time so that I can keep the shape and you'll see what I mean in a minute. So once I'm happy that that's wound around, you've got a little spring there and it's nice and tight. We haven't got lots of gaps. And then I'm going to take my wire off of my mandrel and I'll show you what we're left with. So we're left with sort of a ring shank there um, and then we've got some of our tails coming out. So we've got, I'd say, yeah, we've got three there. Let's do a three because this will give more structure to your ring. Whereas, just let me show you the one that I made before. That one's just got two so it's up to you really what you want to do now then we need to secure this shape so that it doesn't just spring open and what i'm going to do is i'm going to trim this bit because i don't want loads and loads of wire to, that i'm sort of fighting with and i'm going to take my tail on the right hand side and the best way that i found to get this to behave when it's a thicker gauge is to find exactly where you're going to wrap and just start that wrap off with your round nose pliers so that it sort of starts to go in the direction that you want it to and I'm even going to cut more off of there so that you can see what I'm doing and then I'm just going to take this wire through the center and you can use your fingers um, or in my case I quite often feel like I can't get a good hold of it with my fingers so I'll take a pair of pliers and just give it that extra um, tug so that I've got that good tension on there and then I'm just going to wrap this round a couple of times so this is doing two things the first thing it's doing is creating structure um, my ring shape so it doesn't ping open and it's also creating a design so this is completely up to you. You might want to, and you can wrap your wire down a little bit further if you wanted to see a few more wraps. It's completely up to you. I just kept it functional because my little flower covered most of this. So I, let's have a look. I think I did it two or three times. And then you don't really want to trim your wire so that it's underneath and you've got any sharp bits. You sort of want to bend it slightly back up again and then trim it there. And a general rule for me is if I take my fingers over my wraps and I can feel any sharp bits, I'll either take a nail file and sort of file them down or I'll take my pliers and I'll just squeeze that little end in so that you know it's all nice and tucked in and tight and that's gonna be comfortable to wear. And then just take my pliers and squeeze together so that it looks pretty. So now I've secured one side of my ring and if I wanted to just make this into a two ring then I can take that tail and extend it there and I've got I've got two. I think three might just be a little bit too bulky for me so I'm going to stick it at two. But this one's going to be a lot easier to wrap because you've already wrapped one side and it's holding your coil together so you're not sort of fighting against it springing off. Now at this point you want to think that you're going to be wire wrapping your little flower in the middle here. So how much space do you want between your two um, coils doesn't matter too much if you do too much space, you can always squeeze it in a little bit once you're done. Now again, I've got quite a long tail here that I don't wanna be fighting with um, because this is a thicker length of wire. So I'm gonna do that trimming again. And these are just cutters which are essential in any jewelry making. We're always needing to cut off excess tails from things. So um, if you do get one of our tool kits, you'll have, cut you'll have all these tools in there. And then once again, if you feel you can't get it to um, twist round, if it's, if it's sort of fighting you, then I'm going to get my round nose pliers again and just encourage it to go in the direction I want it to go in. I'm going to trim off that tail and I'm going to just wrap it, this time using my pliers, so that I'm getting a really good purchase on the wire and I'm getting a really good 
tension on my wrap and I'm wrapping that round the same amount of times as I did on the other side so I think we've got two wraps on the other side so it just looks pleasing to the eye if it's equal and then I'm going to once again cut off any excess and then we're looking for any wire that's sort of sticking out so the option here is to make sure it looks pretty so you can bring your wraps together with your pliers you can squeeze your little tails into place and then just rub your fingers over so what we've got there is the bases of your ring and it's exactly the same as I used for that so that's your wire ring basic ready to do whatever you want to do with so now just let me clear up I've made a mess let's get rid of all of these we're going to be using our grandidia right that we put on our little wire from the calendar and this is really uh, just a lot of wire wrapping and wire wrapping with a thinner gauge wire is a lot lot easier than what we've just done so with this we've obviously needed a thicker wire because this needs to be the structure of our ring this is the ring part that goes on your finger uh, this part is a wrapping part you're basically adding an embellishment so we don't need such a thick wire we're just basically um, attaching this onto our structure so what we do is you take your ring you decide where you want the center of your flower to sit so sort of roughly between those two wraps that I did and then what I'm going to do you tend to find that when you put the wire underneath the gemstone you can move it when you put the elastic under it doesn't really because it's thicker so you'll have different ways of doing this but I always just need to start off with an anchor point so nice and close to the wrap that I've just done I'm just going to do a couple of coils and these don't have to be super neat at this point because we can neaten them up and then I need to just decide where I want this little grandidiorite to sit now I'm hoping that you can see that because I've used the colored wire you're going to need to just add a little bit of tension here to get that to sit on but it's not going to be super tight at this point um, yet but it will be by the time we finished so I will do a couple of wraps and then I'll put this down so that you can have a look at what I've done okay so if I put that down you can see that what I've done and I've used that colored wire so that you can sort of differentiate between the two wires is I've positioned my little grandidia right on the top I've held it in place and then I have wrapped my thinner wire around to anchor that into place now don't worry too much about this being super neat because you can um, you're going to cover it with the petals so you can cheat I'm all for cheating okay so I'm just going to wrap that round a couple more times on both sides just for the security you've got a lovely rare gemstone here you don't want to lose it and then the same on the other side so there's no rules here you know five on one side whatever it's just um, by touch deciding when you think that it feels secure enough pulling that through now I'm not going to use this tail anymore but I'm not going to trim it just yet just in case I feel that I need it and then I'm going to take the tail on this side and I'm just going to wrap it very gently around the base of my setting so that now I've got a piece of wire that's wrapped and ready to go around and make a flower so I'm going to take what have I done with them here they are my little seed beads or whatever um, beads you choose to make and tip them out and you might have to keep measuring to see how many beads you need but I'll show you that so I'm going to just string on let's see I can cheat you see because I can see what I did before so I've got one two three four five six eight so I'm going to string on eight beads one is my head in the way no no one wants to see my head too. <laughs> Three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight. So this is what I have on my wire and I'm gonna drop it down. And before I finalize anything, I'm going to take them around and just make sure that that's how I want it to look before I wrap it. So I'll take, I'll do it and then I'll get my hands out of the way. So can you see that's about right? And it's like a little, a little flower. And then I'm probably going to take my tail just back through the last bead. So that was the first bead that I put on. And then that can sort of bring those into a circle. I just need to get my other tail out of the way. So this is all done nice and gently and slowly. There's no rush. You're making sure that you're completely happy before you finalize your design. So just let me, I'm going to take that out of shot just while I do it. There we go. So that you end up with your little flower. And then we need to secure this little guy into place. So what I tend to do is hold my finger on it so that we've got that nice um, tension. And then I'm going to wrap it around underneath to secure it in place. Now you wouldn't want to just wrap like once on one side. What I tended to do is wrap it around a couple of times. Each time, you know, you can use your pliers if your fingers are getting tired or you can't get hold of it. And just give it a pull. And you're just, you're trying to stay inside the larger wrap that you did at the beginning so that it's sort of hidden under the flower. And it would be ideally the same color. Um, it would be silver. Uh, I'm just using this, as I said before, so you can see. So you won't really be able to see it. And then what I did with my one was I came around underneath the flower, wrapped it a couple of times around so that that little flower now is getting very, very secure and it's not really wanting to move. And then I finished off by wrapping it around the other side of the ring like this. And you can do that as many times as you want. I mean, that's a bit loose, but that's demo purposes. Um, but you get my meaning. When you're satisfied, you then want to trim off any tails. So same rules apply. You don't want anything sticking out that can stick in your skin or get caught on your clothes. And this is where you can go in and you can tidy up any of your wraps with your pliers. So you can squish them together, you can squish them this way if you need it to be tighter. And then what you're left with is obviously that one's neater because it's been made slowly, um, your little sort of daisy ring. And I just think that having a grandidiorite little center to a wirework ring is really, really pretty. So we've done elastic we've done wire. And then if you are a metal smith um, or you are a metal worker, I just wanted to discuss with you um, about setting in the last few minutes. So I'm not gonna show you how to um, make a ring or solder a ring because I'm assuming that you know what you're doing because you work with metal. So you've made your ring and there was just a couple of techniques that I wanted to discuss with you about soldering on these little snap settings. Now, when you heat any metal, you anneal it. So when you heat any metal, you soften it. And these little settings are already quite tiny um, and a little bit fragile. So what happens when you heat them is that you might find that your little setting on the top distorts a little bit which means that you might have trouble with setting them in the usual way. So let me just see if I can grab one of these lovely little stones. So whereas usually we'd have, as we did at the beginning, the pointy end up and we've got a full ring this time and then pop there, it's easier if you've got a ring because you can get hold of it and press it down. You know, you might not, I mean, that's in there, but it did not snap into place because it's been heated and our prongs have become displaced. That doesn't mean that we can't use this setting. 
it just means that we might have to set this gemstone in the way that we'd set one if we made it from scratch or if <coughs> excuse me we made um, a pre-made setting so what i've got for this the tools that i'm going to use for this setting are um, a ring holder and i'm also going to just use some pliers and i might if i need to use a pusher so if you have soldered this snap tight setting on and your setting's got a little bit loose it's actually going to benefit it um, to maneuver these prongs anyway because it's going to work hard in them okay so i'm going to pop my ring into my ring holder i'm just going to get that gemstone oh no he's not coming out all right you stay there then am i the only one who talks to my jewelry yep <laughs> i bet i'm not so what i'm doing is i'm tightening this up so that it's straight there okay and then what i need to do i'm going to take that out is i need to look at my prongs and all of the rules that we spoke to uh, spoke about before apply as far as we need to make sure that the gemstone is in and it's flat so i'm going to attempt again to just pop that in the way that i did first can you yeah Oh, I heard it snap into place then. But as you can see, now this is an exaggerated way, but if you have a look at that, can I show the camera? You'll see I'm wonky. I'm on a skew width um, there because my prongs have got bent out of shape because they've been heated. But this isn't a problem at all. We just have to approach it in a different way. So what you need to do is get your gemstone in so that it's nice and flat and this isn't a quick job this is a getting down on the level of the gemstone making sure that that gemstone is sitting where you want it to be it will take more time than i've got but i'm just going to talk you through it so you would look all the way around the gemstone and if you think that's just not sitting where it needs to be you can take it out and you can gently use your pliers to open out this setting so all i'm doing very very gently is opening think about a flower opening how the a flower bud opens it's that very gently i've sort of taken the snap tight setting out of it now and i'm setting it like i would if i'd made it from scratch or i'd used a pre-made setting so that i've made more space here within this setting so that i can get my gemstone in there and hopefully get it to where i exactly want it to be nice and flat and then i can either use my pliers um, these are gem setting pliers so they've got slightly longer jaws and i can just squeeze them in working opposites around until i'm happy and then you can finish off with your pusher if you're still not happy you've had a look you need these little prongs to sit over the top of the gemstone you can actually use your pusher and pop it over so by soldering it it kind of turns it um, from a snap setting into a regular setting and you need to just set it like a regular gemstone so what we've done today hopefully i'll have no voice after this my husband will be ecstatic is we have shown you how to do a um, advanced technique or um, how to set the stone slightly differently we've shown you how to do a beginner technique which is your elastic ring which is basically just stringing on tying the knot setting your stone underneath and we've also shown you sort of a, a, a little in between with um, your wire work as well so I hope that I've shown you um, something for everyone and that you've got a little bit of inspiration and I'm so excited to see what the other designers are going to do and what the other designers have got in their door of the calendar so it's been so lovely to have you stay and, and listen to me waffle on for a whole hour it's been blitz about what i love doing which is jewelry making um, so thank you so much for joining me and stay watching all the shows because birthday's not over yet we've got another week to go um, and then you'll have all of the demos from the other designers as well from the calendar of all the other doors right till the end of of um, birthday so all that's left for me to say is happy jewelry making stay safe and i will see you again very very soon so from me till next time goodbye <laughs>